There is nothing that troubles our consciences more than when we think God is like ourselves. So said the 16th century theologian John Calvin, though I found his words when reading a much shorter and newer book called Gentle and Lowly by Dane Ortland. And it's really to that book that we, um, uh, from which we get this midweek thought this time. Isaiah 55 says this, Seek the Lord while he may be found, call on him while he's near, let the wicked forsake his way, the evil man his thoughts, let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him, and to our God, for he will freely pardon. As Christian believers, we are always turning or returning to the Lord. Yes, some of us will look back to a, a big, definitive, one-off moment where we gave our lives to Christ, where we'd say we became a Christian. And yet actually we're always turning back, aren't we? When we see more of our sin, when we're convicted, when we go back to our Saviour God for his help and grace. At least that's what we do in theory. Because here's the problem. If we think that God is like ourselves, as Calvin put it, we might not turn back to him because we might doubt the freedom of his pardon. Because we know what we ourselves are like. We know we can hold a grudge against someone. We can lose patience with someone after a while. We can slowly start avoiding someone because they've annoyed us one too many times. And we can fall into the trap of thinking subconsciously and operating as if God is very similar. And that's why these verses are so refreshing. Why will God have mercy? Why will he freely pardon? The answer comes in verse 8, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. So when it comes to showing mercy and pardon, God's thoughts are on a completely different level. He's not like us, he's different from us. And that's a good thing. Because whereas we pardon in a stingy way, in a miserly way, in a not very complete kind of way, God pardons with a free generosity and abundance. Verse 7, he will freely pardon. The word could be translated abundantly pardon. His pardoning is so much bigger, so much richer than our pardoning. I went to buy some mudguards for our five-year-old on Saturday. I think he has a total of £1.46 in his little money pot. And that's quite a big deal. To have over a hundred pennies is quite a big thing in his mind. Except the problem was the mudguards were comfortably north of £20, 2,000 pennies. But that's not a problem precisely because his little money pot is very different to my bank account where that there are abundantly more pennies than 146, abundantly more than 2,000. You get the point, it's because my bank account is so different from his little pot of money that I can buy the mudguard so comfortably. And it's because God is so different from us that he can abundantly pardon us. So don't imagine he's like you. If you do, it'll slowly suffocate your faith. It'll stop you turning to him. Don't think dripping tap of forgiveness. Think roaring waterfall which you could never exhaust. And why this abundance? Because just a few chapters earlier, Isaiah would prophesy of Jesus' death. He bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Our sin has been borne by the Lord Jesus. He bore the right and rightly awful penalty so that we might know only God's abundant pardon. So keep turning and returning to the Lord this week, knowing that your thoughts are not his thoughts, his ways are not your ways. To end with another great line from Calvin, men cannot be led to repentance in any other way than by holding out assurance of pardon. And in the Lord Jesus, men and women have that assurance. So let's keep turning and returning to the Lord this week. Let's pray. Father God, we praise you 
that your thoughts are not like our thoughts. Your ways are higher than our ways. Your pardon is so much more abundant and free because it's secured by the Lord Jesus and his death. We pray that you would keep us as a church family turning and returning to you, confident of your grace and welcome, and all for your greater glory.